Today we're going to be looking at Argent. Argent is an AI solution for adding Claude AI directly into our studio. Here we are on their homepage, having a bit of a scroll down before we install and have a bit of a practice in our studio. We can see that it is our studio specific. It's a nice, easy integration. So we'll do the installation and see how quick and easy it is. And then they've got some videos. They've got information here about the kinds of things that it can do. We can get it to analyze the last plot. We can get it to debug, clean our data, analyze our data. I've got a few prompts that I am going to have a go of and see how it goes. In terms of their different plans, they've got a free trial, 25 requests. You can get a bit of a feel for it. They've then got two paid tiers, one which is using Claude 3.5 Haiku and the other using Sonnet. Both of those two, 500 requests per month, and then you can buy more. So why would we pay for this rather than just Claude itself? Well, first is the really nice integration. It's sitting there within our studio, so there's a convenience factor. If we're already paying for, say, Gemini or ChatGPT, we don't want to pay for Claude as well. And at the moment, Claude seems to be the best of the three for our coding. Then we're getting a slightly cheaper alternative to be able to access Claude for our coding. In addition to that convenience and slightly lower cost than if we were having to pay for Claude outright, we get a really nice interface. It has a debug button where we can debug our error from our last thing that we entered. And it has some AI agents that will streamline a whole lot of common data analysis activities all getting embedded straight into our studios. Okay, so if we come over to the install and we can see that it's pretty quick and easy. We need dev tools. So if you don't already have dev tools installed, you need to add that. The reason you need to add that is because we're installing this from GitHub. So we need to be able to use the install GitHub function. So there is all of the code that we need. The only other thing that you need to do if we come down a little bit further is get your access code. So even for the free trial, you need to just fill out a little bit of information and it will give you an access code. They'll email that to you and then you'll be all set to go. But here we are, our studio. I've just copied that code over and I think we should be able to run it all in one chunk. So let's get it going. It did ask me to quickly do a couple of upgrades of a couple of packages. And so we did that. We ran our library function there for RStudio AI and then run Argent. That's pulled up Argent AI Assistant into the viewer window. And so I need to enter my access code for the first time that I am using it. So I put in our access code, validate, and we are connected. We now have our chat window here. We can put in our questions. We can debug our last error. We can analyze our last plot on the agents page. You can see we've got data cleaning, transformation, visualization, modeling. We can try and do these with prompts, but we can also jump in here and use these agent options as well. Keeps track of our usage with whatever plan we are on and does give us a nice little guide here as well. Some of these hopefully should be fairly obvious, but I've been working a lot with people on their prompting and some people seem to struggle a little bit with that specificity. The more specific you can be, the better. And you can see we've got examples here. These are perhaps a little bit extreme. Help me with my data. It's not going to get you anywhere, but the more specific you can be, the better. We'll come back to the chat. First one that I'm going to ask, which they do do in their video as well. It's just asking about the environment and we can see that it gives us data sets. So you can see that I was working earlier with the Iris data set and we will have a bit of a play with that shortly. Gives us our R version and a little bit of other information there as well. So now I'm going to give it a prompt where I'm asking it to do some analysis. I'm going to attempt it firstly just with the chat and then we might try it again with an agent as well. I'm saying load the empty cars data set, do a scatter plot, fit a regression line, then give me a one sentence summary. What we can see is that it's generated the code and we can either copy or we can hit insert a cursor to run it. And then it's given us interpretation, so we should be seeing negative correlation with a downward trend on our regression line. Let's run our code. Nice and handy, we can just say insert it cursor 
cursor and run that. And there we go. Definitely a negative slope on that line. It did successfully do that. If we come back, then we could hit analyze last plot and we can see that it has given us an even more comprehensive summary there, including mentioning outliers, unusual patterns, even gives some visualization improvement suggestions, adding some color coding for some of the other variables, things like that, and suggested improvement as well. Okay, let's have a look at the agent. Come over to our visualize agent. And so with our visualization agent, it asks for the data frame. So we need to have set up our data in advance. Actually, empty cars was what we were doing. And then it gives us selections of different types of plots. We want the relationship and then we can enter our data. So this is more like a wizard for producing the plots that we're interested in. We had miles per gallon, so horsepower miles per gallon. If we want, we can add a color. We click add plot and we can see that it's produced a nice looking GG plot. That is something that we could have also specified back in the chat in order to make a nicer looking plot when we did it by ourselves was to specify we use GG plot rather than just built in. So again, specificity really important. And again, though, really nice detailed summaries. This time we're going to work with the iris data set and we're going to be a little bit more vague here. I'm just going to ask it to do an appropriate cluster analysis, summarize the output and explain any choices. What I'm expecting to see here is a k-means cluster analysis with three categories. Let's see how it does. Okay, so without me specifying, I just said appropriate clustering. It has selected k-means. It has normalized. It's gone for three clusters. And so it's even specified matching the known iris species. So it's exactly what it should be doing. It's given a summary. And if we run back to our code, it even gives us the plot. So insert over at the cursor. Here is the visualization of our cluster analysis, we can see it's gone sepal length by width. It's done the classic three cluster. We can see the groupings with a little bit of overlap between two of the species, clear separation of the third, exactly what we're after. Okay, let's test out the debugging. We're gonna do this two different ways. First way is I'm going to put my code in as a prompt. So following our code, I wanted the standard deviation I gave it the R code and clearly I should have used SD instead of mean. It identified mean instead of SD. If we come up, it has the correct code with SD and that it even helpfully says, and we can check what the value is by putting in this as well. So print SD sepal, which is the variable that we made. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to spell it wrong. And if I debug, so debug the last error, correcting the variable name, I left the H off and it spotted that as well. So the debug last error, I think is going to be really handy for you, particularly if you're in that just past beginner into intermediate and the code doesn't always work for you, being able to hit that and get the debug for of your last error is going to be a really handy feature. Let's do a little bit more of an explore with some of the agents that they have. Data cleaning agent. Each of these is set up where we choose our data frame. We can see I've just got built-in ones here at the moment. So no real cleaning needed. But we can see that the options, we've got data type check and conversion, missing values, duplicate detection. It's got a little bit of a summary of what our variables are and their types. We can get outliers, standardize our column names and if we tick custom we've got a box there where we can put in prompts with our own this is going to be super super handy if you have dirty data transformations we've got categorical and mathematical automate suggestions recode categories i definitely do a lot of this and as much as things like dplyr are pretty handy can be a bit of a headache sometimes and it can just be a bit tedious where you're trying to group your categories so having an ai that's going to do that super handy merging combining merging variables aggregating and grouping statistical transformations so really handy stuff in there again definitely see myself using that one visualization we've had a look at modeling agent dimension reduction regression forest so some really handy predictive modeling stuff there and statistical analysis agent we can get our basic stats power analysis effect size multiple comparisons and again the custom this is really handy so there's been a quick exploration of argent it adds Claude into RStudio for you. 
It has some really nice handy menus and tools here, particularly in amongst the agents. It's going to take away some of the more tedious bits of coding and data cleaning for you. You've got a really nice chat function and the debug last error I think is going to be really, really helpful for a lot of people as well. It's been a little while since I have tested an embedded AI solution for doing your coding. This would have to be one of the smoothest ones that I've used. It integrates really nicely, nice and clear in this box here. We can throw our code over to the cursor. We can copy if we want to be keeping track of it up here as a new file. The install is nice and straightforward and you can get all that info argentai.com. If you're new to using R, I'm going to link up my getting started with R in 34 minutes video up above. And I will also link to a playlist of more advanced R videos for those of you who are intermediate and advanced. Hopefully you'll find some interesting videos looking at a range of different packages and things you can do with R.